Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the second in a series of Jesus Was a Guru, brought to you by FYI Sahara slash YouTube. You can find these transcripts just by go going to the search bar and typing in FYI Sahara YouTube. These are lost transcripts written by Yogananda and they they predate his world famous uh, now classic autobiography of a yogi. Therefore the as English was a second language for uh, Yogananda and this is comes from earlier writings um, they start around 1925 to 1932 these are uh, writings and transcripts uh, from Yogananda uh, that and then from there he went on to write Autobiography of a Yogi. But these these transcripts are very, they're imbued with Yogananda's vibration. When Swami Kriyananda asked Yogananda why people came from all over the world and they sought him out was Yogananda said because my vibration is imbued with it these words that are read to you will be hopefully the vibration and um, the Guru's message will have a deeper meaning than beyond words. It is a little difficult to, to um, read the exact script um, because sometimes the sentences were a little turned around because of the language. However, the meaning is still there. It, it doesn't um, detract from the overall meaning. And I quoted some Bible scholars, Rocco, Dr. Rocco Errico and George Lanza, who explained how important it is to understand the culture from which you are uh, transcribing. If you lose track of the idioms of a language, then you lose the meaning of the word. This, of course, has happened to, with the Bible, and I don't have to go into that. But Rocco and George Lanza did talk extensively and studied extensively uh, the Aramaic language, and Rocco's explanation was what if you were reading a transcript of a baseball game 2,000 2, years from now and it's gone through several languages changes and things so you read about a man that goes out to the mound he stands upon the mound and all eyes are, are on him he descends to the ne next mound and he he is just murdered by the cardinals so the message is don't go to the mound and watch out for birds so you see how that can happen it's it's funny when you um look at it from that standpoint but let's let's look at Yogananda's words I, I will not try to correct anything that is um, maybe the sentence structure is not correct. 
that's the worst thing you can do. It's beautiful just like it is, and it is imbued with Yogananda's vibration. Continuing from the uh, first YouTube, their lost home of spiritual blessings. They begin to long for God and inwardly pray for a way out of the conundrum of life. Then when the prayers of such errant children become deep and strong enough, God sends them help. It is then that the one father of all sends a superman on earth to give help to those lost souls seeking souls. Such a man ordained by God to help the individual in response to their deep prayer is not an ordinary teacher but a guru or a vehicle whose body, speech, mind, and spirituality God himself uses to bring the lost souls back. A little insert by me, it makes you think that the guru is like an angel who's handpicked just for you. Um, it's just an interesting thought because it seems to be the, an, um, an answer for an individual prayer. It's not an institution or a church that brings you this, this blessing that I know of. Whispers from Eternity It is written, As a naughty baby, I cried for my Mother Divine, and she came to me as my guru. My guru, I found thee in response to my soul's cries. If all the gods are displeased, and yet... O oh, Guru, if thou art pleased, I am safe in the fortress of thy pleasure. But if all of the gods protect me by the puppet parapets of their blessings, and yet I receive not I benedictions, I am an orphan, left to pine spiritually in the ruins of thy displeasure. Together, Guru and di disciple will fly to his shores, and then we will smash our planes of infinite forever and vanish in our infinite life. The above conception of guru and disciple depicts the only real way to replace, to retrace the truant soul's footsteps back to God. This guru and disciple relationship is not the enslaving relationship between the blind church or temple, the members or temple members and an ignorant so-called 
priest of the temple or church erected elected not by God but by the temple or church organization or by a higher church dignitary honored by orthodox followers but unknown to God of will and obedience, my guru said to me, allow me to discipline you for freedom of will consists not in doing things according to the dictates of prenatal or postnatal habits or whims, but according to the suggestions of wisdom and free choice. He continued, If you tune in your will with mine, you will find freedom. Formerly, my will was guided by habits. But when I turned, but when I tuned it in with God, the God guided and wisdom guided will of the guru, I found freedom. To tune in with a soul who's guided, who is guided by wisdom to find freedom of will, most teachers who slavishly control their students after the pattern of dogmatic teachings destroy the power of free will in them. But obedience, be, obedience to the guru does not produce spiritual blindness in the disciple. On the contrary, it develops his third eye of wisdom and intuition. Most teachers want their students to see through the teacher's eye, but a guru disciplines the disciple only until he can guide himself through wisdom. A guru is sent by God. If a disciple, after following a guru for a long time, should spurn him, then he actually spurns the help sent by God. A guru is not help for this life only. He also makes a spiritual soul contract with a disciple. And let's say, quote, our friendship be eternal and let us help each other through incarnations until we are both completely emancipated in spirit. Sometimes, likewise, an advanced disciple can help a guru and vice versa. Such friendship is not based on any selfish consideration or on any condition. Such divine friendship and perpetual goodwill will express between two or more souls gives birth to the ever pure, unselfish, emancipating divine love. My master said unto me, I will be your friend 
from now until eternity, no matter whether you are on the lowest mental plane or on the highest plane of wisdom. I will be your friend should you err, and then you would need my friendship more than any at any other time. When I accepted my master's unconditional friendship, he said, You will be my friend and will you be my friend under all circumstances? Will you protect me in my highest or lowest strata of mind? I was amazed and stupefied. For how could I dream of my master being in the lowest strata? But until I vowed to be his friend always, under all circumstances, he did not rest. He was gladdened when I said, I will be thine always. It was then, after this amazing spiritual compact or pact, that I understood the significance of a guru, and really I never found complete satisfaction, comfort, and God consciousness until I tuned myself in with the divine consciousness of my master. Jesus knew of above law of emancipation. He must have found John in his re as his reincarnated guru. That is why Jesus insisted on being baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus had spoken of John the Baptist as the reincarnated prophet Elijah. Next, in, connect, in con, connection with the baptism of Jesus Christ, there is, there is very it is very important to remember the spiritual baptism and the spiritual experiences of Jesus, which followed his physical baptism with water by John. It is here we will end this chapter and continue later on. You have to understand the um, concept of Maya and the call of the miasmic world that pulls us away from God. That will help you understand again what the uh, context of Jesus as well as Yogananda and other saints and gurus work from. The guru-disciple relationship appears to be the way to God. You don't find your way to God through an institution, according to you, not Yogananda. In our next, uh, our next venture into the lost transcripts, we will be looking at um, the Black Madonna, and here is, and this is this is actually a statue. This is the head of. This is. This is a statue dressed up, and it's, it, it, they did this a long time ago with the dolls. They would make a, a, a doll and then um, cover it with uh, all kinds of clothing. And um, this is the Black Madonna, and you see the white baby Jesus. I find it, whenever I see the Black Madonna, I feel this drawing as if it is the truth uh, of, of the matter. You find that um, 
chances are with the blending of cultures, the Indian Hindi culture, the Egyptian and the uh, African uh, culture, that narrowing down Jesus' um, racial background starts to become a little tricky. But you see in some of the uh, religious uh, renditions of Madonna and child, the black Madonna, that the child is, is sometimes of a lighter color. It does make you think that um, Madonna, well, it just points to the fact that Jesus was a guru and probably Mary was too. And they came from cultures long ago, but they bought the truth of um, of their of their God, and they taught Jesus taught as the gurus do in parables. He elicited disciples, and he wanted to teach the disciples directly, and then those disciples can teach the next set of the disciples and there becomes a lineage. This is very true of Indi in India. You find a guru who then takes on a disciple and the disciple takes on the vibration of the guru's teachings. And this is the way it's done in India. This just, and that Jesus did not die on the cross uh, gurus know how to um, go into, they can make their heart rate go down and stop breathing at, at when, whenever they want. Um, then they can come back to life. Now that's very likely happened with Jesus. And when he came back to life, he found himself in a tomb and left and was spotted by many people. Jesus continued back to his homeland in India where he learned from, I believe it was the age of 12 to maybe 28. He was a guru and probably studied with um, some uh, saints up in the uh, Himalayas and in India. He bought those teachings back. The similarity between the Hindu culture and that of Jesus is astounding. And that that Jesus became blonder and blonder as he moved north through Europe is kind of funny. But the Jesus, as many people have pointed out, Jesus never said go forth and make an institution such as a church. Um, it, it, he just it wasn't happen. He wanted the disciples to um, be imbued with his word. And that did happen for about 300 years. One disciple taught another disciple and taught another disciple. Then the healing and miracles continued. But when the church saw power and money come into the uh, picture, that's when the only way to Christ consciousness was through the church. Forget the guru. There's no profit in the guru. <laughs> so um, church might be the middleman to get to God. And that's not, not the way it was uh, conceived. And Yogananda would not want that of his disciple. Um, Swami Kriyananda was um, the disciple of Yogananda and when Yogananda died those papers were hidden away in a vault. Now you're getting transcribed um, writings from Yogananda, but they're edited and fixed up. That sounds just like the church. 
Here is another Black Madonna. Um, and there's several distinguishing things about the Black Madonna. Uh, and we'll save that for the next time. But you notice that um, the hands of the Black Madonna, for some reason, are disproportionate to um, the figure itself. It is often um, a statue dressed up uh, in uh, European cultures, and it did come back from the Crusades. And there's um, thousands of Black Madonnas all over Europe, and churches are made, and re religious experiences are documented uh, from the Black Madonna. So there is a holiness to the Black Madonna. I felt it since I was a little girl, and I didn't know why. I just felt this drawn to the figure and the um, baby Jesus. Thinking about the continued lineage from India, the name G Christ comes from um, Krishna. And Hare Krishna is a Hindu deity. Uh, and then uh, you have Jesus the Christ. It could actually sound like um, Jesus the Krishna. So untangling the past is one thing, but following your heart to God is another. And um, um, Yogananda talked a lot about the importance of finding your way back to God. And you have to understand the concept of Maya, which is what we are under the illusion of. Uh, and getting back to God should be our main focus. Not the church, particularly, or organizations such as F SRF. In the corner, you will see uh, my little icon for subscribing. And it says, that was Zen, and this is Meow. And it is in the right-hand corner. Click that so that when the next yoga, lost transcript of Yogananda comes out, I, I can notify you. Your comments are so very welcomed. And just remember that Yogananda said, everything you do is either taking you towards God or away from God. That can actually be your only um, dictate in, in making decisions. Does it take you towards God or away from God? With that in mind, you are on, the, on your path to finding your true guru and your true God spirit. And to go home to your uh, immortality, for we are all immortal.